What is your purpose here? Jack Sparrow. Sent me to settle his debt. Huh. Did they now? I'm sorely tempted to accept that offer. What's up everyone? Today we're learning English with the second instalment of the Pirates of the Caribbean movie where they are on the search for the dead man's chest. What contains a still beating heart of Davy Jones? <laughs> and whoever possesses that chest possesses the leverage to command Jones to do whatever it is he or she wants. But first, let's see what Anibi says about our lessons. Anibi says that we make the difficult aspects of learning English easy with our fun lessons. Because that's what we do. Every week we make lessons just like this one to help you learn English without getting lost, without missing the jokes and without subtitles. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so that you join our community and you won't miss any of our new lessons. Quite according to plan. Complications arose, ensued, were overcome. You got what you went in for then? Mm -hmm. Captain, I think the crew, meaning me as well, were expecting something a bit more shiny. What with the Isle of Demersa going all pear shaped, reclaimed by the sea and the treasure with it. And the Royal Navy chasing us all around the Atlantic. And the hurricane. Oh. 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 All in all, it seems some time since we did a speck of honest pirating. Show us what is on that piece of cloth there. <laughs> <laughs> No, much more better. It is a drawing of a key. Not quite according to plan. Complications arose, ensued, were overcome. To go according to plan is a common collocation we use to say that things happen as you planned them. When we say that something did not go according to plan, we can use quite or exactly to add emphasis. Had a pretty good day today. <coughs> not everything went exactly according to plan, but... For Jack, his plans didn't work out because complications arose. If a problem or difficult situation arises, it begins to happen. In everyday English, we usually say come up. Example, I'm afraid I'll have to cancel our date. Something's come up. Complications arose, ensued, were overcome. If a problem ensues, it happens after or as a result of something. Example, if the Senate passes the law, chaos will ensue in the streets. Lastly, overcome means to successfully control a feeling or problem that prevents you from achieving something. They have uh, 25. 30 guards at most. Nothing that Zoro can't overcome. I'm not going with you. You got what you went in for then. Mm -hmm. He replies this because if Jack was able to overcome the problems that arose, he must have got what he went in for, right? Pay attention to how he says this sentence. You got what you went in for then. Mm -hmm. Note that he connects what with you, watcher and he says went in as went in. Try saying this sentence yourself. You got what you went in for then. You got what you went in for then. So here at Learn English with TV series, we are celebrating the fact that we just reached 4 million subscribers. 
and to thank you for all of your support and to help you continue making learning English both fun and effective, we have a special present for you. We recently started offering an amazing 50% discount to 900 of you who want to become fluent over the next 10 months with our popular fluency course, Fluent with Friends. And if you're watching this lesson today as we publish it, you may still have a chance to get it. Imagine what it would feel like if this time next year you could understand natives confidently, even without subtitles. Where will these new skills take you? Maybe you'll be able to travel and proudly communicate with locals or even get a new job and move to another country. Anything is possible if you set your mind to it and we want to help you achieve it with our best course. Our student, Fina from France, says that our course has changed her life, that she enjoys every minute of it and that she's been quickly gaining more and more confidence in the language with it. So if you don't want to miss out on this opportunity to finally achieve your English fluency, click on the link in the description below. Here you'll be able to learn more about the lessons and join the course and our community of students. Now again, there are only a few spots left and they will be taken quickly. So this could be your last chance to take advantage of this promotion and get the complete package of Fluent With Friends at 50% off. Just click on the link in the description right now and make sure to use the coupon code GIFT4 at checkout to get your exclusive discount. Now, let's get back to the lesson. Captain, I think the crew, meaning me as well, were expecting something a bit more shiny. But with the Isle of Demerta going all pear-shaped, reclaimed by the sea and the treasure with it. If something is shiny or shines, it looks bright. It sounds like they were expecting treasure. Then, if something goes pear-shaped, it fails very badly. He's talking about the expedition to Isla de Muerta in the previous Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Example, we'd planned to go away for the weekend, but it all went pear-shaped. We've got about a trillion dollars worth of mining equipment here. We're not just going to abandon it. What? If it all goes pear-shaped, it's not them that lose a bonus. Then, the pirates on board start giving a list of reasons why they deserve something of value for all the trouble that they've gone through. Pay attention to the words he uses after this list. And the Royal Navy chasing us all around the Atlantic. And the hurricane. Oh. Aye. 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 All in all, it seems some time since we did a speck of honest pirating. He says all in all here to show that he's considering all those reasons they have just listed. See how it's used in these examples. What are you doing to me? Subject is confused, yet self-aware. Personality seems intact. Hunger remains primary focus. All in all, appears to be a perfect candidate. Okay, so we went out, saw a movie, met some nice people, said horrible things about each other in public. All in all, a pretty magical night. <laughs> all in all, it seems some time since we did a speck of honest pirating. A speck is a very small mark, piece, or amount. Because naturally pirates are dishonest, they steal and also destroy things, this sentence is kind of funny because he's saying that they've actually done a bit of honest pirating. We just saw Jack and his crew set out in search of the key that'll open the safe where the dead man's chest is. Here's another one of the main characters plotting to do the same. I wait here ten years. Oh, max ten years. I could eat you there. Wondering how it's played? I understand. No! It's a game of deception. But your bet includes all the dice, not just your own. What are they wagering? Oh, the only thing we have. Years of service. So any crew member can be challenged by anyone. I challenge Davy Jones. <laughs> I accept that. My 
soul. An eternity of servitude. No! Against? I want this. How do you know of the key? That's not part of the game, is it? You can still walk away. I wait here ten years. I'll match ten years. Wager is another word for bet. You can use it as a verb or as a noun. You'll be the first naturalist to set foot on the islands, I'll wager. I say, let them fight each other. Or we lay back, watch, have a drink, play some wagers. Hey! Mm. Hi. If you match what your opponent is putting on the table, you make your wager the same amount of money. In a broad sense, to match is to make something equal to something else in value, size or quality. Oh, the Dauntless is the power in these waters, true enough. But there's no ship that can match the Interceptor for speed. If you're enjoying this lesson, then make sure you check out this lesson we made with the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie. I'll link it in the description down below. Wondering how it's played. I understand. No! It's a game of deception. When you deceive someone, you make someone believe something that's not true. The game they're playing, he says, is a game of deception, which means that in order to win, you have to be good at deceiving other people. Check out these examples with the different forms of this word. Gentlemen, says. Fellow conscripties, you have been monstrously deceived. We are deceptive then. Yes. My offer still stands. Yeah, with some hidden caveats, no doubt. No. Nothing hidden about it. No lies, no deception. I'm there when you open up that tomb. I'm still waiting for the other shoe to drop. Your motive's deceptively pure. You talk the talk, but I know you'll do anything for your brother. So any crew member can be challenged by anyone. I challenge Davy Jones. Will is challenging Davy Jones to the dice game. Challenge here means to invite someone to compete against you. You and your associate proposing to engage me in a gun battle. Well, I challenge you to a fist fight, but the way I heard it, you only like to tussle with working women. In another use of this word, you might challenge ideas or people, meaning you question their truth, value, or authority. The first by Lord Cutler Beckett. The stakes. My soul. An eternity of servitude. No! In gambling, the stakes are the money that you risk. If you're playing for a lot of money, you might say that there are high stakes. I had no feelings for those people. <laughs> but you, you'll backslide. You want to bet? Stakes? 50. Dollars? All right. Witness? Witness. Done. We also use this in a broader sense to talk about how much risk there is in a particular activity. We might say that there's a lot at stake. The meeting is beginning. The stakes are very high for me. I'm getting nervous. My stomach is in flux. How do you know of the key? That's not part of the game, is it? Question tags, that is, short questions at the end of a statement, are said with a rising intonation. That's not part of the game, is it? We'll play some examples that contain different question tags, and after that, we'll give you a few seconds to practice saying it. Just a tip, focus on mimicking exactly as they say it. 
How did you get here? Sea turtles, mate. A pair of them strapped to my feet. Not so easy, is it? Not so easy, is it? You ain't from round here, are you? You ain't from round here, are you? You can still walk away. Walk away means to leave a bad or difficult situation. I'm going to shower and get ready for bed. You're kidding, you're just gonna walk away from me? Well, Charlie, when you're being irrational, you leave me no choice. Bootstrap Bill, you're a liar, and you will spend an eternity on this <laughs> ship. Master Turner, feel free to go ashore. The better next time we make bolt. <laughs> Fool. Why did you do that? I couldn't let you lose. It was never about winning or losing. The key. You just wanted to know where it was. Who sent that thieving charlatan onto my ship? Who told them of the key? Jack Sparrow. This character, named Bootstrap Bill, joins Will Turner in his challenge to Davy Jones. Bootstrap Bill also wages to serve Davy Jones for eternity, and he's the one who ends up losing. Master Turner, feel free to go ashore. The better next time we make bolt. <laughs> Shore is the land along the edge of a large area of water, such as an ocean or lake. However, notice that shore is different from ashore and onshore. We say ashore when it's after a verb. Let go the anchor! Young Mr. Turner and I are to go ashore. Onshore as one word is exactly the same as on shore as two words. This is also how the words board, aboard, and on board work. You! Get away from there! You don't have permission to be aboard there, mate! I'm sorry, it's just, it's such a pretty boat. So Bootstrap Bill is now expected to serve Davy forever, while Will Turner is free to go. However, Davy teases Will about this. Feel free to go ashore. The better next time we make port. <laughs> because they're not planning to make port, meaning to go to a port in a very long time. Fool, why did you do that? He says, why did you do that, as, why did you do that? Why did you do that? So, did you becomes do. Listen to it again. Why did you do that? Why did you do that? If you're enjoying this lesson, then I highly recommend you check out this lesson I made over on our other channel, where you can learn about all the aspects of connected speech. You can click up here or down in the description box below to watch it next. Who sent that thieving charlatan onto my ship? Who told them of the key? A charlatan is someone who pretends to have special skills or knowledge. He uses the word thief as an adjective, a thieving charlatan. So on top of being a charlatan, he's also a thief, someone who steals. I'm here to arrest you as a fornicator, a charlatan, and above all, a coward who hides behind the name of another. Not 
quite according to plan. Complications arose, ensued, were overcome. You got what you went in for, then? Captain, I think the crew, meaning me as well, were expecting something a bit more shiny. But with the island of Myrtle going all pear-shaped, reclaimed by the sea and the treasure with it. And the Royal Navy chasing us all around the Atlantic. And the hurricane. Oh. All in all, it seems some time since we did a speck of honest pirating. Show us what is on that piece of cloth there. No, that don't do no good. It does me. It's a key. No. Much more better. It is a drawing of a key. I wait here ten years. I'll match ten years. Wondering how it's played? I understand. No! It's a game of deception. That includes all the dice, not just your own. <laughs> what are they wagering? Not the only thing we have. Years of service. So any crew member can be challenged? By anyone. I challenge Davy Jones. My soul. An eternity of servitude. No! Against? I want this. How do you know of the key? That's not part of the game, is it? You can still walk away. Bootstrap Bill, you're a liar and you will spend an eternity on this <laughs> ship. <laughs> Master Turner, feel free to go ashore. The better next time we make bolt. <laughs> Charlatan onto my ship. Who told them of the key? Jack Sparrow. This is either madness or brilliance. It's remarkable how often those two traits coincide. 